What would cause a man, a preacher of the gospel, to say the following? Quote, I thank you, sir. They had taken from me the Sermon on the Mount, but tonight it has been restored to me. I have a bigger Bible now than when I came into this hall tonight, unquote. Hello, I'm Jerry Johnson, and I welcome you to this edition of Against the World. This edition of Against the World is brought to you by the Verona Seventh-day Baptist Church, a country church with a worldwide connection making a difference for Christ. Visit their website at veronasdbchurch.org or their Facebook page, Verona SDB Church. And by Sovereign Cruises and Events. Sovereign specializes in Christian cruises, pilgrimages, and conferences. They have represented notable ministries such as the White Horse Inn, Alpha and Omega, Christian Research Institute, and Ligonier. For more information on booking your own event or to attend an event already scheduled, please visit them on the World Wide Web at SovereignCruises.org. So, who was this preacher who said this? Well, in all honesty, I don't know. However, the man to whom these words were spoken to was none other than one-time dispensationalist Philip Morrow, and he records these and other encounters like them in a small track he wrote entitled, I Was Robbed. Philip Morrow was a hero in the fundamentalist camp in the early part of the 20th century. He wrote the legal brief that was used by William Jennings Bryan to defend the Tennessee law prohibiting the teaching of evolution in the public school systems during the now infamous Scopes Monkey Trial. In 1924, he also wrote one of the most comprehensive works defending the King James Version of the Bible. So why did this man and so many others report to Morrow that dispensationalism had robbed them of the Word of God? Well, let's take as our example the aforementioned Sermon on the Mount. Dispensationalist C.I. Schofield wrote, Quote, the Sermon on the Mount has application literally to the kingdom. In this sense, it gives the divine constitution for the righteous government of the earth. Whenever the kingdom of heaven is established on the earth, it will be according to that constitution. Unquote. Simply explained, Schofield and most dispensationalists of the early part of the 20th century taught that the Sermon on the Mount is for the future kingdom of the Jews and has no application to Christians or the church age. Of course, this does not mean that current dispensationalists hold to this position. As noted in previous segments and in our documentary, The Late Great Planet Church, The Rise of Dispensationalism, dispensationalism as a system continues to mutate. To say it another way, there are numerous dispensations within dispensationalism. They now believe that their spiritual ancestors, men like Schofield and Gabriel Ann and others, were wrong. However, or should I say ironically, many just can't seem to get those words to come out of their mouths. Instead, they point fingers at their critics, I wonder who they're speaking of, and accuse them of misrepresenting dispensationalism. My friends, please hear me on this. You are the ones who are misrepresenting dispensationalism. You need to point your finger at your own spiritual forefathers and leave it at that. Just simply say they were wrong. Besides, who can know what your position will be this week or let alone next week? It appears that every time I bring up, or I guess anybody brings up a dispensational truth from Ryrie, Wolverd, or Schofield, Dispensationalists today angrily respond by saying, well, I don't believe that. You're misrepresenting my position. In all honesty, I have no idea what dispensationalism believes anymore. And it would appear they don't either. Until next time, this is Jerry Johnson standing contra mundum against the world. <music>